It was not so very long ago that this country was drowning in dust. The last few seasons have been, have been difficult. Um, the last four, I guess, have been have below average, but the last two in particular were the hardest we've ever had. So, yeah, they were, they were very, very challenging. But since late 2020, things have really turned around on Dave and Alice Woods' broadacre farming operation northwest of Gundawindi in southern Queensland. It's a huge relief. Um, we knew that would happen at some stage, but, you know, the trouble is with drought, you never know when that's going to be. We've got photos when James was in my arms in dust storms when we couldn't see the mailbox 200 metres ahead of us. Um, so to now be tripping over plants out in the paddock and we can't find the cattle in the grass is just, yeah, it's something you would never have expected so quickly. Smell. Long-term rainfall deficiencies remain, but a turnaround in climate drivers has brought a return to wetter conditions for most of Australia. Good boy. On the other side of the country, northeast of Esperance in Western Australia, Lyndon Mickel is a good 70 to 100 millimetres up on the last couple of years. We do rely on thunderstorms in, in that summer period, but to have those good opening rains in April and May, uh, it's an absolute godsend. It's, it's actually nice to have a cedar going in a paddock and not be covered in dust. We're lucky that uh, probably going into this point in time, we've got a fairly full profile of moisture in the ground. So um, yeah, things are actually looking quite promising for us at this stage. If you need a drink, Lyndon's working on building healthier soil and has been looking at the ratios of trace elements and microelements. She's just starting to flare. So. He's starting to see results Mate, with his reliance on fungicide down this year, despite the heavy crop. The philosophy that we're using is we're trying to build a healthier, stronger plant, and by doing that, it can withstand whether it be a frost or, or a dry spell, uh, so it can uh, keep our uh, production at a consistent level, whether it's dry, dry year or not. In Queensland, the highs and lows of the last few years have been a real test of Dave and Alice's farming business. They too are working on their soil. After years of the sun baking their bare paddocks into hard clay pans, the first summer crop after the November 2020 rainfall was disappointing. It was really interesting because we were getting lots and lots of rain, but the rain was, was, um, was mostly running off and we're actually infiltrating very little of it. And that was, that was quite a shock to us. And um, yeah, we realised that there was, there was a bit more to it. And um, we realised that we actually had to be doing a lot more to be able to, to better infiltrate the water and to be able to utilise it. So there's so much complexity in a small area. To better understand their soils, the Woods have offered one of their paddocks to researchers from the University of Southern Queensland for a field trial to analyse the effects of cover cropping. Every few weeks, PhD candidate Han Lu Zhong gets out to monitor the experiment. In summer we had cover crop sorghum growing here. Now in the winter we are having wheat crops growing here. Try to see what's the effect of the cover crop on the soil moisture and also the yield impact. Back at the lab they test samples for soil hydraulic conductivity, soil moisture retention and texture analysis and use that data to make models to replicate these soil processes. The main aim of cover cropping is to build up vegetation so rain that falls between crops can be absorbed into the soil instead of running off or evaporating. The trade-off is that the cover crop itself uses some of that soil moisture. So it's a delicate balance to ensure maximum soil moisture is available to the main crop. I think it's very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. According to project supervisor Ashin Garamani, initial results are positive. It's not only about increasing soil moisture, it's about uh, availability of nutrients too. So we won't be looking at trade-off between them. We may decrease um, soil moisture, but on the other hand, we increase nutrients available for plants. Oh, here's a big one, look. Building on this concept, in another paddock, Dave and Alice are trialling an eight-species cover crop. Every one of those species has a unique set of um, root exudates that are stimulating biology in the soil and we only understand a tiny fraction of that but, but we do understand that each one of them plays a significant role. Not only is this multi-species crop benefiting the soil but it's tasty grazing for cattle and humans alike. You want to open it? Yeah. People think we're a bit crazy growing, growing eight things in one paddock um, but 
I don't know, it's a bit of trial and error. We don't really know if it's going to give us the benefit that we want, but we won't know until we've, we've done it for a few years. There are many methods of improving soil health and moisture, but no one size fits all. All of these are subject to current research and, and development and, and is being trialled on farms. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we're doing a lot of work in that area. How it will land will depend a lot on, on the area that you're in, how suitable it is for that area and what niche you find for these technologies. Research that could prove timely. Svi Hockman, farming systems researcher at the CSIRO, says variable rainfall years are set to become more common. One of the aspects of climate change is that we expect to get both more frequent droughts and more frequent wet periods. And so although Australian farmers are terrific at handling climate variability, it's going to become more challenging in the future uh, than it has been in the past, and we're already seeing that. Just how much variability we're going to have to deal with over the next few years will be largely dependent on how the climate drivers play out. The big climate driver at play at the moment is the negative Indian Ocean Dipole, or IOD. So when there's a negative IOD, or Indian Ocean Dipole, that means that there are warm waters off of the northwest of Australia, which encourages evaporation and means that there's plenty of moisture available in the atmosphere. So when the weather systems move across from the west to the east, they can tap into that moisture, dragging it down across Australia, bringing wet conditions all the way to the southeast. The negative IOD is expected to hang around until the monsoon moves down at the beginning of summer. The Bureau of Meteorology is currently saying a full La Nina is unlikely in the next few months. But regardless, warm waters are expected to encourage wetter than average conditions for the eastern two thirds of Australia this spring, which is pretty good news for Dave and Alice. Uh, like I guess any farmer, Kate, we do need a little more rain to get us through to a harvest. If we can get maybe an inch or, or a bit more in the next few weeks, that'll really finish our crops for us and, and we're on track for it to be one of the best seasons we've had in a long time. <laughs> <laughs>